Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another English language video and I'll be sharing how I learned basic English grammar and also some tips on how to improve your grammar and to take it to the next level. I know it's been a really long time since I've done an English language video and I do apologize for that. I've just been trying to find what videos I could film for you guys. As you know, if you've watched my previous English language videos, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a lecturer, I'm not qualified in any way to teach English. I'm just an English student sharing my experience and my tips on learning English as a second language and so I don't feel like I can teach you grammar it's one of those things that you really have to put the effort in but I thought I would share my experience in how I went from knowing zero English to some English to quite a lot of English and hopefully that will be interesting for you guys learning English and I think the tips that I'll share on how to improve your grammar may really help you guys because these are things that I still use up to this day on my day-to-day -day life in order for me to learn something new. And if you're new around here, then I would love for you to subscribe so you can see more videos from me. Subscribing is free. All you have to have is an email account and then it means you get notified when there's a new video from me. And also, if you're here on my channel, for something else other than English language videos, maybe you're here for my parenting videos, my beauty videos, or something different, then please do come back because there will be other types of videos coming soon. But I did not want to leave this channel without an English language video for a long time because I know that there's a lot of you watching who like these videos and who are interested in my English language journey. If you haven't seen any of my previous English language videos, I'll leave a playlist linked in the description box below so you can catch up with all the videos that I've done so far. I've done a video on how I became fluent in English, one on how I got a British accent, another one on tips to improve your vocabulary, um, things on how to become more confident speaking in English. So I've done quite a few videos already and it would be good if you're new to watch these videos before you watch this one or, or watch after, whichever way you prefer. But definitely do check those videos out because if you have any questions for me, a lot of them will be already answered in these videos. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you will ask is how do you go from knowing no English grammar to knowing all the basic English grammar? And it is a very slow process. You have to have a lot of patience. And to me, it was very, very slow. It started in school and then I was lucky enough that my mum was able to enroll me in private English lessons. But I would say that that was the bulk of where I learned all my grammar. I wouldn't say that I learned a lot of grammar going abroad and traveling and doing things like that. I probably learned a lot of fluency doing that, but grammar wise, I think I knew pretty much most of the basic and advanced grammar by the time that I'd gone abroad. And what really helped me learn basic grammar was having an interest in it, having an interest in languages. I've always been interested in how sentences are formed and how and why each word takes a certain place in that sentence. So that really helped me develop an interest in learning grammar. And because I was young learning English, it was another subject for me, just like physics, maths, Portuguese, which is my um, native language. So learning English grammar to me was like learning another subject from school. I started with a Portuguese to English dictionary and I think if you are very new to English language, you need a dictionary that is translating things from your native language into English just so that you can make sense of things. But then when I thought that I was getting better at grammar, I changed to an English English dictionary. So that was a definition di dictionary rather than a translation dictionary. I don't know if that's the correct terminology for the name of the dictionary, but I hope you understand what I mean. And I never looked back. Once I was on to English English dictionary, I never changed back to Portuguese to English dictionary. I just felt like that would be too confusing. I felt like I was learning a lot more by trying to understand what the word meant by reading the definition in English, then to go back to reading the definition of that word in Portuguese and then have to make sense of it in English. I don't know if any of that is making sense, but in my mind, I just felt like if I wanna know what a word means, why don't I read about what that word means in English already, rather than in reading about it in Portuguese and then having to do all the hard work of translating it in my brain. I feel like that really helps with fluency as well. Another thing that I 
did a lot when I was first learning English grammar was to get my English language book, you know, the lessons book that you get from your school and fast forward the lessons. So let's say I had homework to do and it was like page 15 of the book. I remember doing page 15 and then attempting to do 16, 17 and 18 and 20 by myself to see how far I would get. And also so that I was a little bit more clued up when it came time to be in the classroom and the teacher was going through those pages. It wasn't all new to me. It, I was more familiar with the words. I remember just reading like all the sentences and trying to um, find out the meaning of everything that I didn't know ahead of the lesson and so I just felt more prepared when I was in class with my teacher because I know I knew what to expect and I kind of knew half of the things that the teacher was teaching because I was like making the effort to learn it at home myself rather than just leaving it all to the classroom because Believe it or not, I am a very shy person and you wouldn't say that from someone that does YouTube videos for a living, but in a big group of people, like a big classroom full of people, I am really shy and I hardly ever put my hand up to ask any questions, which is why I think I really thrived in private English schools because the classroom sizes were much smaller and I felt a lot more comfortable asking questions. I felt like I learned a lot better in a classroom with 15 pupils rather than in one with 45, 50 pupils. And the last thing that really helped me learn English grammar was to read song lyrics and watch TV shows with English subtitles. And I know I've mentioned this in a lot of my English videos already, but it was honestly one of the game changers for me, one of the things that made me learn English so quickly. I used to have to ask my mum to print some of the song lyrics that I liked in work and bring it home for me to read and analyze it. Nowadays, it's so much easier. You just go online or on your phone you download it you have it like really easy access I attended all of my lessons I made sure to pay attention to everything and to put in the hours at home working hard to learn all the grammar rules so this is how I learned English grammar and it's not groundbreaking it's just what everybody has to do and now let's go on to the tips on how to improve your grammar and how to take it to the next level so that you feel like you know more than just the basic grammar my first tip is to learn the logic behind the rule and there are a lot of rules in English grammar as we know and it's really hard to memorize them all. You'll probably never memorize them all unless you're some kind of genius um, but I certainly haven't memorized all of the English grammar rules. But if you learn the logic behind the rule, even if you forget the rule, you can piece things together and understand how something is meant to be said or something is meant to be written. So let's take the tenses for example. It's really hard when you're starting to learn English to know if you're going to be using do, doing, done and people keep throwing those words at you like past, continuous, present, simple and you just don't understand when you use one or the other. But if you understand the logic behind the tenses, it becomes a lot easier. So the simple present is an action in the present. I do laundry every day. The simple past is an action in the past. I did laundry yesterday. And the simple future is an action in the future. I will do laundry tomorrow. The continuous present, past and future express a continuing action. So I will be doing laundry is the continuous future. I was doing laundry was the past continuous and I am doing laundry is the present continuous. So that way instead of memorizing what goes in which tense you can figure it out by yourself because you've learned the logic behind the rule. My second tip is to make a commitment to learn grammar. Set a goal and work towards that goal. If you find it easy to have a target, give yourself a target two years, five years to learn basic English grammar, whatever works for you, but make a commitment and don't give up because it's hard. Also, don't try and compare your progress to your friend's progress if you've been doing it for the same amount of time and you feel like your level of grammar is nowhere near that person. We all learn things in different paces, not just languages, but in life we all have goals and we achieve things at different times in our lives. So comparing yourself to someone else's progress is not going to help you learn grammar. All it's going to do is discourage you from learning it. It's highly unlikely that you're going to learn basic and even advanced grammar if you don't commit yourself to working towards it. And if you don't make that commitment, 
and you give up when it becomes hard, you're never going to learn it. And remember, there are always going to be things that you don't know, even when you're very advanced in English language. Take me, for example, I still struggle with prepositions in, on and at. They are the bane of my life. I still don't use them properly. I still make lots of mistakes with that. And I'm very happy with my level of English, but I still struggle with prepositions. My next tip is to find real life examples. So when you're studying grammar, you're often studying a rule and then there's an example of how to use that rule in a sentence. And finding examples and sentences that mean something to you will make it a lot easier for you to illustrate that and don't forget. For example, if you're learning prepositions, and I know I always go back to prepositions because I'm still learning it, but your generic sentence in your book says, I am going on a journey. You probably won't remember that sentence after you read it and it won't stick in your mind. But if you change that to something that you do on a daily basis, something that affects your life and that reminds you of your normal life, you're likely to remember. I have two young children and I have to take my son to school. So to me, it would make a lot more sense to change I'm going on a journey to I'm going on the school run. And the school run, if you don't know what it is, is basically the school drop off. But that's the way that we say it here in the UK. I don't know if it's the same in America, but in the UK, we call it the school run. So if I said to myself when I was learning that I am going on the school run, I would always remember that going on the school run is on. Instead of going on a journey and then trying to figure out if I'm going in the school run, at the school run, to the school run, on the school run. So you see what I mean, you get my point. Change it to things that make sense to you and it will make it easier for you to remember those examples, sentences. My next tip is to have an array of grammar apps and books nearby. Keep them with you at all times. If you see something that you don't know, you're likely to forget it if you don't check it. And if you don't have an app or a book with you, you're not gonna check it later. You're probably gonna forget it. It's so simple, but having something that you can reference to with you at all times can be the difference between learning a new grammar rule that you spotted when you were out, when you were in school or in work, and not learning it because you forgot to check it. So definitely have apps on your phone. I've done a video recommending some of my favorite apps for English learning, so I'll leave that video linked below. Next tip is when you learn a new grammar rule, practice it straight away. There's a big difference between knowing something and knowing how to use it. And you're only gonna learn how to use it if you practice. And so practicing immediately makes sure that your brain retains the bulk of that information. If you don't illustrate it, your brain won't retain that information, especially with grammar, because it's such an abstract thing. My next tip is something that I used to do a lot when I was first learning grammar and it is to practice out loud when I learn something new. And what I used to do is to try and pretend that I was my own teacher. So if I'd learned something new, a new rule, a new, I don't know, anything new in English, I would stand in front of my mirror in my bedroom and I would explain it to myself what I just learned. That way I used to learn so much more than just reading it from a book and writing a few sentences. It actually made my brain have to get into gear to explain it to someone else. And if you have friends who are learning English with you, you could explain to each other and just try and learn like that. But I was a little bit shy, so I used to do it in my bedroom and pretend that I was my own teacher. It was a way for my brain to make sense of it all. And sometimes I thought that I understood something, but it wasn't until I tried to explain it to myself in the mirror that I realized that I actually don't understand what I'm talking about and I really don't understand that rule. And so I went back to study it some more and then tried again teaching it to myself. I think that's a really important tip and something that definitely helped me and it still helps me to this day. What you guys don't see, or like the backstage of these videos is that sometimes I practice things that I'm gonna say to you guys just so that I know that I'm making sense. Other times it just comes out of my mind and you know, just like really spontaneous, but 
there are times when I know that I want to say something properly and before filming I stand in front of my mirror which I'm staring at here and I try and explain it to myself. So it's something that I've taken with me throughout my entire life but definitely helped me with my English grammar. And my last tip is to study your mistakes and this is probably the most crucial tip of all. Without studying your mistakes you will keep making them and you'll never understand why you're making the same mistakes over and over again. And it's also very important to understand what are you struggling with. Is it the form which is how the word works in the sentence or is it the function which is what the word means? If you feel like you're struggling more with form, then practice the how a lot more. How does that work and how do I put that in a sentence? If you feel like you're struggling with the function, then it's probably the meanings that you need to learn the most and that's the what. So jot down some of your mistakes and analyze if it's form or function that you're struggling with and that will help you focus on something. So that's everything that I had to share with you guys today about English grammar and I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and check out the playlist in my description box below with all of my previous English language videos so you can catch up with all of them. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. It helps me create more of these videos for you guys and it's free for you. So why not? If you made it this far, leave a comment below telling me what you struggle with the most in English language and what do you find easier? I think it would be very interesting to read if a lot of you struggle with the same things or if it's quite varied. I hope you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.